on Walt. Chapter 5. Just before I get into it, I want to read a couple of scriptures to you. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. You all doing okay? <laughs> okay, I want you to listen to this because we're living in these times right now. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate and endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, <laughs> they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. Isn't that pretty amazing? You know, if you don't like what I'm saying on TV, you can flip the channel and find somebody that you like what they're saying. That's not hard to do. But don't ever not listen to somebody because what they say to you kind of makes you a little bit uncomfortable in your seat. In 2 Timothy 4, 2, Paul told Timothy, herald and preach the word, keep your sense of urgency, stand by, be at hand and ready, whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, whether it's welcome or unwelcome. Now listen to this. You as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. Hmm. <laughs> and convince them, rebuking, correcting, warning, urging and encouraging them. Not just encouraging them, but all of it. And can I tell you, the ministers that you have who really love you will take a chance on you getting aggravated at them if that's what it takes to get the truth through to you that will make the changes in your life that you need that are gonna bring you the things you say that you want. And I feel so strongly about that. It's not my job to make sure you don't get mad at me. It's my job to make sure when I stand before God that I've done what he wanted me to do. And that's your job too. Amen. So, having said that, let us press on. <laughs> In Ephesians 5, the first nine verses... <laughs> Talk about pursuing clean living. <laughs> Pursue means to crave and to go after with all of your strength. If you want to be an excellent person, you're going to have to really want it bad because we live in a very mediocre world and people will fight you on it. If you want to be a really honest person, it's possible you could lose your job. Because somebody out there is going to want you to help them cheat, help them lie. They're going to want you to do immoral things. But your responsibility is first and foremost to God. It's not to them. And if you do what's right, listen to me, God will get you a better job than the one that you're being threatened to lose. If you want to get out in the world that we live in today and serve God, I might as well tell you it's going to cost you something. But here's the thing. Romans 14, 12 says, every man will stand before God and give an account of his life. Every man. And I don't know about you, but that brings a reverential fear and awe to my life. This is going to be over. Things are not going to stay the way they are here forever. Everybody gets old. Everybody dies. There's nobody that can get away from that. And I know you don't think much about it when you're 15 or 20 or even 30, but let me tell you, I've been thinking about it a whole lot more lately. 
I mean, I'm serious. I, I had this eye-opening revelation a few years ago that I've already lived a good two-thirds of my life. And I don't have any time to mess around. And let me tell you something, a lot of you don't either. And the day is going to come when we're going to all stand before God and give an account of our lives, and I am spending my time now getting ready so I don't have to be ashamed then. Amen? Matter of fact, I love the scriptures, and I became very aware of them last year. There are several places in the Bible where Paul talks to people about their behavior, and he follows it up with this statement, for the Lord is near. For the Lord is near. So can I just say to you tonight, it's time to behave a lot better because Jesus is coming back soon. <laughs> I think I'll say it to this group over here. I mean, think about that. Think about that. It's time to make those decisions that you know you need to make, but you keep putting off till another time. Do you know the most dangerous word that I know is tomorrow? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do it tomorrow. God doesn't want us to do it tomorrow. He wants us to do it when he tells us to do it. And you know, I told a group of people last week, I was preaching in Jacksonville, and I said, we have to understand that when God puts something on our heart to do or not do, there's an anointing on us then to do it. And if we'll do it when God says to do it, we're going to have supernatural help from him. But if we wait until it's our time, we're going to end up trying to do it by ourselves. And then it probably won't work. All right, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's just read a few of these first verses just to talk about clean living. <laughs> I'm sure you can't hardly wait. Here you go. I love verse 1, therefore be an imitator of God, copy him and follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. And the next thing he says is, and walk in love. Well, you know, love just really covers everything. I mean, to be honest with you, I can just tell you the absolute truth. You could, you could forget everything that I said tonight and do nothing but focus on walking in love and you'd have all the rest of it covered. Because love never, never does any harm to anyone. Love is always patient. It's always kind. It's always good. It's always humble. It's never jealous. It's never envious. It always believes the best. It never gives up on people. It's not haughty. It's not high-minded. It is not touchy. It's not easily offended. Amen? And that's 1 Corinthians 13, about 1 through 8, something like that. And so honestly and truly... If you don't want to think about all these other behaviors, I've learned in my life, I just study love a lot and I focus on trying to love God and love people and, and it just takes care of so many things that then I don't have to try to not say things that hurt people's feelings and I don't have to try to get over being mad at people. There's so many things we don't have to try to do if we focus on love. And you know what? As Christians, we're great about talking about love and theorizing about love. I mean, one of the worst selling books I had was the book I wrote on love. Honestly, it was terrible. It was embarrassing how bad it sold. And it wasn't because it wasn't good. It's because people don't place a priority on that. It was about forgetting about yourself and doing things for other people. Well, you write a book like that, don't expect to sell many copies. I thought about writing one on dying to self and just, you know, I think I may just put out some really gut-wrenching books in the last few years of my life and just see maybe if you won't read them, maybe things get bad enough in the earth, somebody will come along a hundred years from now and say, I need that. <laughs> Listen, the Bible says the only way that you know that you've passed over out of death into life is by the fact that you love people. Until we learn how to love people, we're held in continual death. Our lives are just full of death. So he talks a lot about love. And then get this. But immorality, verse 3, <laughs> sexual vice, all impurity, 
of lustful, rich, wasteful living, and that doesn't say you can't have money, it says don't be wasteful, or greediness, and you know, some of these things are almost, they've become almost acceptable sins. Covetousness. Well, I want what you've got. Well, the Bible says it's wrong to want what somebody else has got. We should be thankful for what we have and trust God to give us what he wants us to have. <laughs> greediness must not even be named among you. Verse 4, let there be no filthiness, obscenity, indecency, nor foolish and sinful, silly and corrupt talk, nor coarse jesting. Like, don't be telling dirty jokes. Okay, let's take it to another level. Don't even tell suggestively off-color jokes. You know what? God doesn't think they're funny. I'm glad you're here, brother. <laughs> I read a story today about a group of um, men that were sitting around, and they were church men, godly men, supposedly, <clears throat> and there were some ladies there also, and they'd all had dinner together, and so the ladies got up to go in another room to do something else, and one of the men said, oh, now that the ladies are gone, I heard this story today that I want to tell you, and one of the, like, really godly men said, wait a minute, brother, if you can't tell it in front of the ladies, then don't tell it to us. Because God's going to hear you whether the ladies are here or not. And see, I think that we need to get a little bit braver, even with our friends and the people that we love. And just say, you know what? I really don't want to hear that. You know what? I really don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to, I don't want to keep going there. I mean, somebody that I know got into some sin recently, and man, everybody was just like, Ask, talking about it and talking about it, talking about it. I finally said, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. We don't need to be talking about that kind of stuff. You talk about things if you need to, but you don't need to just keep talking about it and keep talking about it and keep talking about it just because it's gossipy, because it fills you with death that doesn't fill you full of life. And since I'm out in the deep water, I might as well just keep going. Let's just talk about... <laughs> Okay, listen, let's talk about sexual immorality for a little bit. Well, do you really think, Sister Joyce, that we should be talking about sex in church? Well, I think we better talk about it here. I don't care what modern culture says. The Bible says that you should not have sex until you get married. And I know marriage is not very popular today, and people say, well, it's only a piece of paper. It's not about the piece of paper, it's about the commitment. It's about making that commitment. And I really respect young people today who are taking vows to stay pure until they actually get married. I think that's very important. Now listen, this is not under condemnation. If you've already made mistakes, there's forgiveness, but don't just keep making them over and over and over. We had a really beautiful thing happen in a conference that I did earlier this year. There was a couple who'd been listening to me and they'd really been touched by the word and they'd been living together for a long time. And they came to my conference in Phoenix and made a decision that night, it's time for us to get things right. And they went and talked to Pastor Mike and said they were gonna make things right, stop living like that, make a full commitment and get married right away. You know something, it's time for us to live the way God wants us to live, not the way the world says it's okay to live. Listen, young ladies, it's perfectly okay to say no. I don't care what everybody else is doing, my answer to you is no. And if that's what you want from me, you got the wrong person. Amen? I had to say that. Immorality. Use wisdom, ladies, in how you dress. Don't be dressing in some kind of provocative way that's going to... You know, it's a shame when you got to get up in the pulpit in front of this many thousands of people and tell them how to dress. 
But here's the thing, we're too affected by the world. Just because it's fashion, that doesn't mean I get to wear it. There's all kinds of pretty things you can wear and still not have half your body hanging out. <laughs> well, I'm sure I've gone to Medlin now, but it's too late to turn back. Paul warns over and over against sexual sin, greediness, indecency. Come on, when something stupid comes on your television, don't wait to see how stupid it's going to get before you turn it off. <clears throat> hey, listen, I do that too once in a while. I think, well, surely it's going to get better. You know what? If it ain't good in the beginning, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. Amen? If I watch television, I'm not just watching a movie I've rented or something. I actually watch it with the remote control in my hand with my finger on fast forward. We have to protect ourselves from the junk that's out in the world. We don't need that kind of stuff coming into us. Well, now I know for sure that anybody who comes back tomorrow is really serious. Okay, let's look at chapter, uh, at verse um, five. <laughs> Be sure of this, that no person practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life, you know, it, it's not just about not doing stuff, it's, it's about not sitting around thinking about doing it too. Amen. Or one who is covetousness, covet, covetous, who has lustful desire for the property of others and is greedy for gain, for he is in effect an idolater. That person, don't let him think that he has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now, boy, when you read that, it gets quiet. It's like, well, now, wait a minute. I'm not saved by my behavior. I'm saved by the grace of God. Yes, absolutely. You're saved by the grace of God, not your behavior. But I think I can also give you proof in the Word of God that a person who is really saved <laughs> That doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes, but I want you to pay attention to the word that I believe is the key word in this verse. Be sure of this that no person practicing, practicing. There's a difference in making a mistake occasionally and doing something wrong and being sorry and repenting and being willing to walk away from it. There's a difference in that and practicing wrong behavior. And I don't believe that we can have a right relationship with God and practice over and over all kinds of sinful behavior and say that we're saved. I don't believe that. And I think we have to understand that there's a lot more to being a Christian than just praying what we call the sinner's prayer. If a person is sincere, that's not just a prayer that we pray, but we give our lives to God. And we want, repentance means to turn around and go in the totally opposite direction from the way you were living. We can't just receive Christ and tack him onto our mess and keep thinking that we can just keep living the way that we are living, and now it's all going to be okay because we receive Jesus. He changes us into his image from glory to glory to glory. I have not arrived. You have not arrived. But I'll tell you what, I am spending every living breath that I've got pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I hope somebody in this room is being even a little bit challenged. Learn in your experience, verse 10, what is pleasing to God and live accordingly. Can we learn to just live to please God? You know, wanting to please God should be our number one goal. God, I want to please you. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to represent you. I want to glorify you. Colossians 1.10, that you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, 
and steadily growing, growing. Desire to please God and keep growing. Are you a God pleaser or a man pleaser? Do you know if you're going to please God, you're going to have to not please people sometimes? You realize that? Like the thing with sex, you may not please your boyfriend, but let me tell you something. You will please God. And it's not going to be your boyfriend you're going to have to answer to when all this is over. <laughs> you're not going to stand before your boss who wants you to help him steal something or lie to somebody and give an account to him of your life. You're going to stand before God, and I am too. And so now's the time to make the better decisions <clears throat> in our life. Now I'm going to do about three more verses and then... We're going to be done for tonight and pick this up again tomorrow. Verses 14 through 17. Now, listen, I'm writing, I've got a whole book coming out in the fall that's based on these scriptures. And it's called Seize the Day. It's about how to take your life back. Amen. Don't give your life to your emotions. Don't give your life over to your mind. Don't let people run your life. Wake up, sleepy Christian. Stand up. Be strong. Don't let your flesh rule you. Now, here's what it says. Therefore, he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine and make day dawn upon you and give you light. Look carefully, then, how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people, making the most of your time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Such powerful scriptures. Have a plan for your life. Plan to study the Word. Plan to pray. Plan it. Put it into your schedule somewhere. Don't try to work God into your life. Work your life around God. How many of you would be honest and say that you have a very difficult time trying to discipline yourself to spend that regular time with God on a regular basis? If I could get down on my knees and beg you, I would beg you to pray through and make that a priority in your life because there is nothing more important than that. I would rather that you spend a half an hour quality time with God, personal fellowship with God, than to come to my conference. I'm glad you're here and I want you to come back tomorrow, but I'm telling you what, nothing I say is going to stick or make any sense to you if you don't gotta go to God and ask him to put it together in your life. People cannot give us what we need. Only God can give us what we need. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know what to do. What do I do when I spend time with God? Listen, I don't care if you go sit somewhere and just go, well, Lord, here I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but here I am. I love you. I'm a mess. Help me. If you don't help me, I'm done for. Well, Lord, I want to behave myself today, but it's not going to work if you don't help me. So I'm getting ready to go to work. And I know it's going to be trouble if you leave me alone for one minute. See, this is what it means to talk to God. Don't get in what you think is prayer. Don't do this. Oh, thou holiest, most heavenliest, most awesomest, amazingest Father. <laughs> Just drop all the religious phoniness. We're not impressing God with that nonsense. And just talk to Him and tell Him like it is. Amen. Well, be intentional with your pursuit of God. Make a commitment to the one who can meet all of your needs. There's a lot more in this chapter that you don't want to miss out on. 
So please take advantage of today's offer. The Ephesians Action Plan, it's six teachings on DVD and CD, the study guide, and the whole book of Ephesians that we've put into a special little booklet for you. You can carry it around with you. You can read it over and over. I think you're going to really enjoy these resources. And you know what? This would be a great gift to give someone that you know loves to study the Bible or wants to study. It's also great for home group Bible studies. So I think this is going to be very valuable. Enjoy your day, and thank you for being with us. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. For a limited time, we're offering a Bible study of Ephesians action plan. Joyce teaches the entire book with you. If I study your word, the word has the power to change me. I can't change me, you can change me. Inside the action plan is a personal study guide. Then we've included the letter of Paul to the Ephesians and six teachings on CD and DVD. Answer the questions, take notes, and journal what God shows you through this study. These helps will walk you through each chapter verse by verse. It's like doing a Bible study together with Joyce. Get it for your personal study or group. All this can be yours for a donation of $35 or more. Call us, 1-800-727-9673, or visit us at JoyceMeyer.org. We host these conferences.